Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are here uh, gathering together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we living, you die for our sins and be buried and rose again the day according to the scriptures. We believe in your name, Lord, because you pay for all our sins. We confess our sins today before we worship you in spirit and in truth. Cleanse our sins and forgive our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. Then anoint us with the Holy Spirit so that we may be able to see the kingdom of God and to hear the voice of God through the scriptures, Lord. Thank you, Father. Protect us from the power of darkness of the devil so that we may not be robbed of any of your words to the devil. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, hello everyone, welcome on board. Before we hear the sermon, as usual, uh, let me read, um, um, let me read a book of Psalm, chapter 14, through uh, verse one through seven. If the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God, they are corrupt, they have done abomination, abominable works, there is none that does good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they were any that did them understand and see God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that does good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. You have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. You remember in the Second World War, in the Holocaust, in the Nazi, you know, ate up more than six million Jewish people. The Bible says, in the future, the Lord bring back the captivity of his people as he promised. Okay, the main message of the sermon today is Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verse 1 through 27. Okay. Yeah, just lean very carefully, okay? Very, very important message. Here, your children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and leave. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her, embraces her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the ears of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right, right paths. 
When thou goest, thy step shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, and let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of an evil man. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light, that shines more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those who define them and help to all their flesh. I Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lip put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyes slid look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and lest all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Let me ask a question. Have you received the wisdom of God? From school, you receive the wisdom of the world. How you behave yourselves in the material world, in the world. To be rich, to have more prosperity, kind of things. Yeah, you know, but you know, the wisdom of God is totally different from that. Today, the Lord is asking us, asking you, do you want to be filled with the wisdom of God? Or you don't need that? Or you think it is uh, just enough, you know, the knowledge from school to survive? God speaks of the wisdom of God throughout all the scriptures. Therefore, to realize what is the wisdom of God has to eat the words of God book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse in details. The people in the world are so busy to seek the wisdom for their successful life financially. They study hard in school and continuously accumulate various kinds of information through the medias, mass medias. Today, we hope to understand what the wisdom of God is through the scriptures, including the main passage given unto us. We also may be blessed to be filled with the wisdom of God through understanding. The Holy Ghost teaches us through the words of King Solomon given to his own son. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep the wisdom Keep thee, and wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, with, and with all thy get, getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. O hear, O my son. 
and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are like unto those that find them, and health in all their flesh. Yeah, it is speaking, young men and women, you know. Don't chase a beautiful woman, but chase what beautiful woman. That is wisdom of God. If you understand the wisdom of God is the most beautiful things in the world, you are supposed to chase it in all your life. If not, you are ended up with chasing beautiful girl and boy, all right? Solomon became the king of Israel in his young age. He submitted a thousand burnt offering unto the Lord God to seek the wisdom of God so that he might be able to judge the people of Israel. God gave him not only wisdom, but also rich and honor, because he never asked for himself long life, neither riches for himself. Okay. If you God asking you, just ask only one thing from me, which one you going to ask for it? Solomon, he was so young. He never asked a rich and honor. He ask for wisdom so that he may be able to serve the people of God. He was able to judge the people of Israel with the wisdom and understanding. The Holy Ghost has spoken to us through the whole scriptures of the wisdom and understanding from God so that we may be wise to ask for wisdom of God exactly as Solomon did. Before we begin a new week, we may be blessed to understand of the wisdom of God. When God created all things in the earth, he made them in his wisdom. And then all the earth was full of his riches. Look around. All things, even we are his he also made the heavens by his wisdom too. In other words, the wisdom of God is in his word and the wisdom of God as the power of creation. God recognized Job as the upright man. He testified of the wisdom of God. You know, long 4,000 years ago, the man named Job understand what is the wisdom of God. He said, and unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. To examine yourself, whether you have wisdom of God and understanding. Then you, you can examine yourself, whether you fear the Lord. And you departing from evil things. What is the fear of the Lord? Is it tremble before the words of God? Whenever we hear the words of God, to read the words of God, you just you know tremble before the words of God. Then you have wisdom of God. He witnessed the fear of the Lord is to tremble before the words of God and obey them. Prophet Isaiah testified of the Holy. Spirit given unto them the believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. God of wisdom manifested in flesh. He became a man. God became a man. He spoke of what kind of people he will give his wisdom. Listen very carefully. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babies. Even so, Father, 
for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father, neither knows any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. You are so blessed because you hear the words of God when you are young. The Lord Jesus testified of himself, saying he is the Lord God that had given the wisdom unto King Solomon a long time ago. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the man of this generation and condemn them, for she came from the uttermost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, the greater than Solomon is here. You know, the queen of Egypt, her name was Siba, you know, heard about the wisdom of Solomon, you know, so that she came to Israel to check what kind of wisdom Solomon had. But she's surprised. She totally fall, fall, fall in love with Solomon, you know, because seeing the wisdom of God, he was filled with the wisdom of God. Apostle Paul also testified of the wisdom of God through the Holy Ghost of being filled with wisdom. Yeah, hear this, okay? How he is just, you know, described the wisdom of God. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Can you say that? Can you feel, have felt like this? How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Do you know the mind of the Lord? Unless you read the Bible, such a scripture, there's no way for you to mind of the Lord. Because, you know, all the words of God is what? From the inner mind of the laws. Or who has been his counselor? Or who has first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. Who can do it? Almost people want to receive something and give it to him after that. Who has first given to him? And it shall be recompensed, rewarded unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Finally, all things heaven and earth, including our, including us, shall be belong to him. You know that? Then we'd better give it to him. See? Yes. Then she will give, it, give us whatever we, we need. See? It is a wisdom. Apostle Paul understood that all things of him and through him and to him through the wisdom of God he testified unto the Roman Christians of the reasonable service as well as reasonable lifestyle very clearly. Yeah, even today, every Sunday, Christians go to the church to have a service, right? To watch God. Now, what is real reasonable service? The Holy Spirit, you know, spoke through Apostle Paul. Listen very carefully. And examine yourself. You really, you know, give him, you know, a real good reasonable service, reasonable worship. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by, re by re renewing of your mind that you may prove that is that good, which, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What about you? Can you understand that about reasonable service, reasonable life to the eyes of God? He testified that it wouldn't make the cross of Christ of a non-effect if he preaches a gospel with the wisdom of words. He also testified the saying, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? 
of the wisdom of God, he also testified, saying, For after that, in the wisdom of God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. In addition unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is power of God and wisdom of God. Yeah, Jesus Christ is power of God and wisdom of God. Yes, the more you know Jesus, the more wisdom of God you have. How will you know more Jesus? All the words of God regarding Jesus Christ is God. Apostles receive the wisdom of God. The word took foolish. The people are people see the evidence against Paul in his sermon to the church in Corinth. And not the words of my words and your sermon linking human wisdom and convincing it has to represent the Holy Ghost and with the power because he tried to be in the power of God, nor to make of your faith in human wisdom. The Apostle Paul received the wisdom of God, which is seen foolish unto the world. He testified of his preaching unto the saints of Corinthians. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. The Holy Ghost made the Apostle Paul testify of the wisdom in the world that is not from God. You can compare. I bet we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. He continued to testify of the wisdom of God. It was also which is the wisdom of God. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us, by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knows no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. But things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Yeah, there's four kinds of wisdom, right? Wisdom of a man, wisdom of the world, wisdom of the politicians, rulers, and wisdom of God. The words cannot teach you wisdom of God. Even the wisdom of rulers, politicians, you know, if they're really wise, how they could crucify Jesus Christ, that is wisdom. Wisdom cannot crucify wisdom. That's why their wisdom is not wisdom. That is from the devil. That's right. The natural man that is not born of the Spirit of God considers the words of God as foolish. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Yes, the words of God only could understood spiritually, only through the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul sent a letter unto the Ephesians and said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 
the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of glory of his inheritance in the saints. Apostle James encouraged you to ask us to, for the wisdom of God. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given them. What about you? I bless all of you to ask the wisdom of God now to receive freely. If you ask, you will be given. The reason you have not received the wisdom of God because you have not asked for it to God. Only the way to ask the, for the wisdom of God is to search the words of God to find out the hidden wisdom within them. Obeying his words of wisdom, we shall have our life, not repenting at all, forever. You know, I don't know whether you know or not. In Korea, you know, in my times, you know, so hard to pass the entrance examination to the college. The top level of college is very, very difficult, okay? In my high school days, I never studied, you know, Sunday. Only I went to church, you know, to serve the Lord. Every day before I study, I never failed, almost never failed to read the scriptures, you know, three chapters at least. The receiving wisdom of God, the wisdom of God override the wisdom of the world. See? I'm testifying of my life, what happened in my youth life, young age, okay? You better take a reference from me as a pastor. All right? God bless you. Thank you, Father. Bless all of them to have wisdom, to ask wisdom to you, Lord. They need the wisdom of God more than wisdom of the world. They go to school every day to receive the wisdom of man, wisdom of the world, the wisdom of the princes of the world, but only come to church once a week. How the wisdom of God can override the wisdom of man and world and principalities. Give them understanding so that they may behave themselves to such as scriptures, to be filled with your wisdom. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.